Yes, cried the witch, and they all clambered on. The witch tapped the broomstick and whoosh, they were gone. Hello, I'm Julia Donaldson and I was reading there from the end of my book, Room on the Broom. You might have got that book or some of my other books like The Gruffalo um, at home and I'm probably best known for those picture books. But I have also written a whole phonic reading scheme which has got 60 books in it and it's called Songbirds. I think it's probably my biggest challenge ever but I still had terrific fun writing those books. And I'm really pleased that now these Songbirds reading books are available in these bind-up versions so that um, you can share them with your child in the home. Um, of course, sharing stories at home is a huge pleasure. Um, I often get asked about how the best way to go about it is and what tips I could give to people how to share stories with their child and improve the child's reading. Well, my first tip would be don't worry too much about improving their reading or making it some kind of test. You really do it for the enjoyment, for the pleasure. If the child enjoys it, they are going to want to learn to read. Um, my second tip would be to try and include a number of rhyming stories. This will introduce the child to a lot of patterns and repeated sounds, like here we've got the witch had a cat and a very tall hat, long ginger hair which she wore in a plait. So your child will start to recognise these sound patterns which are going to be very important when they are learning to read. And then of course the other great thing about rhyming books is that the child just learns the books off by heart. I so often get parents saying, oh, my child can recite, um, you know, one of your books. And what then happens, the child learns the book before they can read, but when they can read, they go back to that book and they realise they can decode these bits they know off by heart. They think, oh, that's how you write hat or cat or plat. So rhyming books, very good idea. Another thing you could do is to act the stories out a little bit with your child, taking turns to do the different voices. Um, I'll try and give a little demonstration. This is another of my books, The Highway Rat. Uh, this is a highway rat. He's a very wicked character and he steals food from poor innocent travellers. So, um, you know, you could maybe act the highway rat. I think Actually, perhaps your child would probably like to be the highway rat and you could be the innocent traveller. Um, on this page, um, this is about a rabbit. You could say, um, I have no cakes, the rabbit replied. I just have a bunch of clover. The highway rat gave a scornful look, but he ordered, hand it over. And your child could say that bit. Um, another thing to remember is that it doesn't have to just be stories. There are lots of good joke books out there, nothing wrong with them. There's good non-fiction books. There are poetry books that children often like. And I think it's a really good idea as well to get a comic delivered. I think there's nothing like that thrill when um, something addressed to your child arrives on the doormat. Now, you don't just have to read at home and I think the very very best place for your child to discover their own reading tastes is in the local library. Your child doesn't even have to be beginning to read, they don't even have to be able to talk. Um, take them out to the library and um, there there are just troughs full of picture books, there are loads of books on the shelves, there's probably a nice helpful librarian who can help suggest something new for your child if they want to move on a little bit. For very little children, there are lots of great rhyme time sessions going on in libraries. In Scotland, actually, they're called book bug sessions. And I've got book bug here. This is the, the book bug mascot. And in the book bug rhyme time sessions, um, the children chant and sing and just have fun getting to know the sounds to 
enjoy the rhythms which are going to be so important later on when they do become readers. And in the summer, most libraries run a really excellent scheme called the Summer Reading Challenge, where every child has to read six books over the summer holidays and report back on the books. And along the way, they get lots of stickers and certificates and encouragement. That's brilliant to bring on your child's reading. Don't forget to make school your best friend. Your child probably is coming home every day with a reading book or a book purely for enjoyment or maybe both. Um, don't forget to get these books out of their school bag. They might be buried right at the very bottom. And if the teacher wants some feedback from you, give the feedback that's required. And don't forget as well that it's not just one way. If you've got any worries about your child, any suggestions, if they may be getting a little bit fed up with some of the stuff they're getting from school, you can go to the teacher, you can send a note in, you can see them at the um, parent-teacher's days. Not in a, obviously not in a confrontational way, but it is supposed to be a partnership. Another tip is to play lots of games, word games, letter games. I remember that when I was little, my mother introduced me and my sister to a game where she would say a word, like if she said cat, which ends in t, then I would have to think of a word beginning with that letter. So I might say top, then my sister might say pill, and our mum might say log, and so on. That's just one game. I think if you go out a lot with your child, then that's a great place to make up your own games. You could, you could just play I spy, which is a brilliant way of enjoying sounds and letters. Maybe just looking at all those cars with number plates, you might think of games around the, the letters in the car number plate. My own children um, loved um, looking at advertisements and road signs. And I remember that one of my sons, when he was little, he said, look, mum, it says Kitty Kenta. And I thought, what's Kitty Kenta? And then I realised it was city centre and he hadn't yet learnt that a C can have two different pronunciations. Um, of course, the games don't have to be about sounds and letters. They can just be about stories. You can enjoy stories anywhere. I don't think when my own children were little, we ever went for a mountain walk without crossing a bridge and playing the three Billy Goats graph. Someone would have to go under the bridge and be the wicked troll, and the others would take turns going over the bridge and being little and middle and big Billy Goat graph. And I now get so many letters from people telling me that they spend their weekends going on gruffalo hunts. So maybe that's another thing you could do.